I'm saying again? My, my name is Gerard Jacobs, J-A-R-O-D, J-A-C-O-B-S. Coming to you here today from Hippocrates Health Institute, West Palm Beach, Florida. It's my pleasure to be here right now. I'm living my passion. Anything that they talk about here is find out your purpose and your passion. My purpose in being here is to make a difference with people. My passion is doing what I'm doing right now, sharing that with people. One of the very first things I learned here from Dr. Brian Clement is take full responsibility for your health. Many Americans don't like to do that. Well, the doctor said, or I read about it. You know, take full responsibility. I'm sitting here right now talking to you because that was the first thing I did was say, it's about me. Nobody knows my body better than me. Uh, to go back and tell you my story a bit, uh, I've had multiple sclerosis for 30 years. Now, that's a, a statement, but there's a lot more to that statement, meaning that we all have Google on our phones. You can look it up, okay? Uh, men who are diagnosed before they're 30, I was diagnosed at 29 with multiple sclerosis, don't live to say the words, I've had MS for 30 years, as I'll have in May. You know, they kind of die off around 22 to 25 years. Similarly, is that men with multiple sclerosis don't get to say, I'm 58, I'll be 59 in three months. You know, they die around 45, if that. So I'm a double miracle there. I say that with a lot of pride. Specifically speaking, because I've worked my ass off, sorry, you know, to get to that point. Um, there's actually a third miracle there, that based upon the diet here at Apocrypha's Health Institute of being a raw vegan, I am now asymptomatic, reversing all my symptoms. There's a bunch of videos of me on YouTube walking around, all about becoming a raw vegan. Stop and think about that. It's responsibility for your own health. It's totally unique. I tried the Western meds. 2006, when I had to stop working, when the MS got really bad. Before that, I was a perfectly healthy guy, normal guy, living a life, wife, kids, and all that. And I had MS, and nothing really happened. Then 2006, things got worse kind of quick. So out of fear, I consulted my local neurologist to see what they want me to do. And they said, try this uh, crap. I mean, try this poison. So I tried this stuff, and that stuff didn't work at all. I tried that stuff for 2006, 2007. At the end of 2007, my jokingly referred to a doctor saved my life. He said, this stuff isn't working, don't take it anymore. Which is a joke, but like, it didn't work for me. So it took me 2008, 2009 to get that out of my system. I was literally physically on my back, 2008, 2009, bedridden, couldn't do much of anything, just detoxing. I hadn't yet, had not discovered a diet yet. Uh, very beginning of 2010, I became a vegetarian, which was easy, I stopped eating beef a long time ago. So I stopped eating chicken and fish, but I still had dairy in my life. So I was a uh, vegetarian, trying to find my way through, tried pastas and sauces and such. Um, 2010, 2011, I wasn't getting anywhere, but I was detoxed pretty good, moving along. At the end of 2009, I'm sorry, at the end of uh, 2011, it occurred to me, gee, what about being a vegan? So I had come here for dinner, and I tried the vegan lifestyle. I said, gee, given that I had allergies and asthma as a young boy, giving up dairy and knowing that dairy causes allergic reactions, that wasn't the hardest thing for me to do. So I tried becoming a vegan. That was rather easy. To say is rather easy is an understatement because when I became a vegan, in less than two weeks, i.e. 14 days, 12 days, it's like, wow, my energy went through the roof. I felt really good. Um, so I started becoming a vegan in 2012. Then I was more exposed. I started coming to Apocrypha's more often, and I learned about becoming a raw vegan. And it occurred to me again by my research that most all, if not all, autoimmune diseases, which MS is, autoimmune diseases flourish in a warm environment. So therefore, since I'm in Florida, I'm getting heat from the sun. Gee, if I don't heat myself from the inside out, stop eating hot foods. So I stopped eating hot foods, becoming a raw vegan in 2013. Happy birthday in March, I did that. Became a raw vegan in March, and the change was amazing. One of the unique things about multiple sclerosis is that everybody's symptoms are unique, but there's, there's two or three that are very... They run through the whole gamut. Virtually everybody, i.e. 95% of people with MS, they get heavy fatigue, which is no different for me. I was physically going great for about three to four hours a day, taking a nap for two hours. Then give it a go again for four hours. But once I became a raw vegan in less than two weeks, not even 17 days, less than two weeks, boom. I looked one day and said, I'm going for 10 hours here. I feel great. It's like the whole fatigue thing just disappeared. I give full credit to the raw vegan diet, the kind of diet they have here at Hippocrates Health Institute. It worked out really well. So I've been a raw vegan now since March of 2013. Minor tweaks, minor tweaks there. Here people talk about a plant-based diet. I'm on a sprout diet, just like they have here. You know, every day, twice a day, 
I, I grind my own wheatgrass, so I juice, put it through the juicer. I use wheatgrass every day. Three or four ounces in the morning, three or four ounces in the mid-afternoon before dinner. On an empty stomach both times. There's a good hint in there for you. Uh, I have my wheatgrass, and then I have sprouts. Just a handful of sprouts, whether it's uh, sunflower seeds, buckwheat seeds, pea sprouts. Throw them in a bowl, squeeze the lemon on it. Again, lemon is a great detox that God gave us. When you have a lot of lemon on your food, it's a natural detoxifier. So I put lemon and uh, olive oil and Himalayan salt, which everybody should use. My body does not need, your body doesn't need any iodine. So I don't need iodine salt, so I use Himalayan salt. So Himalayan salt, uh, olive oil, and lemon. It's a great salad dressing. Put sprouts in there, put some red onion for a little bit of taste and such like that, uh, and it works really well. And that's the kind of diet I have two salads every day. And again, as part of the Hippocrates Health Institute protocol, they have a, uh, a cereal diet where they want you to have a, I forgot the word, um, they have whole, whole grain cereal. I have whole grain cereal every day, not with milk. I would never have cow's milk again. I'm not a baby calf. Uh, I use uh, coconut milk. It's great stuff. Coconut milk and my little, I have a little bit of fruit. I have a banana in it there, though. They don't really advocate that there, but one little banana is not a big deal. Banana and coconut milk on my whole grain cereal every day. And then I have my sprouts later on in the day. It's wonderful stuff. And don't forget about my, uh, about the uh, wheatgrass. The wheatgrass is just like, it's just like amazing stuff. I mean, it's a gift from the heavens. That stuff's got everything in it. It's amazing stuff. All other things that I wanted to add, since I, I'm perpetually doing research, I'm always on Facebook, is two things that just came into my awareness, is that one, as of the end of 2013, the last recorded thing, all right, Big Pharma now spends more money on advertising and marketing than they do on research and development. Let that sink in for a minute. That's a lot of criminality going on right there. Sim similarly, is that, again, in the 2012, when we last reported, more people have died from the use of pharmaceutical drugs than have died from illicit drugs. Again, let that sink in. So we hear all about crime and how all these terrible things. You know, people are dying, they're killing, yes. But more people are dying from the drugs that doctors have prescribed to them. Think about that. Anybody, see, I'm a karma kind of guy. Anybody that makes their living off of my illness, I don't really care for that kind of person. And when you stop and realize that doctors do get cash on the table for prescribing drugs, don't tell yourself that they don't. They definitely do. It may look like food for their staff, but they it's still they're still getting paid something for prescribing poison. MS drugs, by the by, we'll say a little specific, specific on MS right now. The drugs they prescribe for multiple sclerosis, they don't work. Their words, not mine. They're called DMDs, disease-modifying drugs. Based on, the, again, just Google it there. Disease-modifying drugs have an effic efficacy. They work in and around 28 to 29% of the time. When it runs against placebo, placebos work 23 to 24% of the time. That means for a whopping 5% difference based on a placebo, of no side effects, don't bother taking the drug. It may or may not work anyway. You know, if it's not, it's not that its efficacy 20, 28, 9, 20 of the time. It means it doesn't work 71% of the time. Those are not the best odds you could ever find in your life. Why would you want to go to the track and bet on a horse? 71% of the chance is not going to win. Why well, bet on the horse? Yeah. So just to be aware of those things, that for me, life was rather easy, meaning I, I'm my own beta test. You know, I test everything and try things and see if it works. I'm uh, an idea before I take your questions is that I am rigorously diligent. That means that I am totally, all the time, watching out. What am I eating? Where am I going? Looking behind me. Can I, a chance of falling over? And I'm diligent about it. When I say I never cheat, I pretty well never cheat. I'm almost ivory snow about it. The 99, 44, 100 is pure. Uh, if my girlfriend has a hot cup of soup, so you got to trust, I'll have a, hot, I'll have a, a spoonful. Is that cheating? I'm not going to hurt myself without one spoon. My diet is just so pure the rest of the time. Having said that, um, given that I have multiple sclerosis, a uh, chronic degenerative disease, incurable disease for all this period of time, do I get sick? Yeah, I get really sick for about four to six hours. That's it. I mean, I'll get sick. I'll cold, flu, whatever. Like, and I'm a guy. I'm going to feel, oh, I'm dying here. That's how guys are with big babies. So I feel like I'm dying. But four to six hours is done. You know, the good news about that is that it takes really quick. The bad is that by living such a pure lifestyle, I'm very susceptible to a lot of things. I mean, like, I'll, I'll catch a bug, and it's like, I'll, it's there. It's like, if anybody, no one caught it. Well, I'm going to catch it because I'm just so, my body is so clean like that. 
But I'd rather have it that clean than take anything else like that. Um, those are the points I wanted to make. Okay, sprouts are living food. You can't get life by eating dead animals. You can't get life by eating crustacean food. When you cut a, uh, a head of lettuce from the grass, it's already started to die. Sprouts are still living. The sprouts that I have every day, twice a day, have little green tips in it. They're still living. Like they're still growing. That's called living food. The chlorophyll, is, the chlorophyll is active. So I eat living foods. And I can literally feel it. You not feel it, feel it? I can feel it growing in my body. It's life. And more important than that, it's a double effect. Meaning, it's very easy for my body to digest that stuff. It's user friendly in our computer world. It's user friendly to my body. And my body can easily assimilate the enzyme nutrition from the sprouts into its system where it needs it. Uh, I would wholeheartedly recommend Hippocrates Health Institute to everybody and anybody. 